recording. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. This panel is titled Leading as a First Year. And I'm just so excited to have three really special people who made, you know, I've been at Hopkins for about 11 months now. They've made my 11 months and longer. I've known Awe for longer, just so incredible. Um, and so when I was talking to first years about, you know, what what can I do to get involved? You know, how can I find my place at Hopkins? How can I define leadership and create a real space for myself? I couldn't think of three better people to, you know, talk with you all today. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce myself and let, you know, my colleagues introduce themselves. And then we'll just dive in and hear from our three peeps. And please, you know, know that you know, questions are welcome at any time. So feel free to put them in the chat or, you know, unmute yourself, we'll get rolling. So. I'm Hope. I am the life design educator for student leadership and involvement. So my role is really to support students in figuring out how to get involved outside of the classroom. You know, how can you build skills? How can you talk to people? How can you try things to really figure out what you like and don't like? And then, you know, once you've done the things, how do you tell the story, right? So whether that's to, you know, an internship or a research position or a full-time job opportunity, I want to help you, you know, really capitalize on your leadership and tell that story in a way that you know, showcases who you are. So I'm going to pass it to Andrea. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So hi, everybody. My name is Andrea Wiseman. I primarily work with first year students in the Whiting School of Engineering, and I've been at Hopkins for 10 years now. So I know quite a few uh, Hopkins students as well as um, alumni. My background is in res life. So I did about five years in res life first and then the last five over in the life design lab. Love that. Mike, you're up. <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mike Gonzalez, the life design educator for first years in KSS. Uh, I've been here as long as hope has been in Hopkins. A little longer, you've been there. A little longer, maybe a couple months, and I'm new to Baltimore. Uh, before Hopkins, I've been uh, working uh, with students in linking their major interests with internship uh, aspirations and connecting them to alumni that would resonate with their uh, major goals. So I'm very happy for continuing that uh, within the Hopkins context, and I'm really Looking forward to supporting Case Has First Years uh, that are here. Awesome. All right, let's kick it over. We'll do alphabetical order because it's just easier. So Awe, can you introduce yourself? Tell the group kind of who you are, what you're currently doing, and what were some of your, you know, major highlights in terms of involvement at Hopkins? Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Awe. I use he, him, his pronouns, and I am currently a first year master's student at Stanford studying civil engineering. Um, I just graduated in May, and while I was on campus, uh, I was involved with quite a lot, but like, uh, that's not supposed to be a flex or anything. It's just, I was just saying. Um, I was involved with a lot, but I was primarily involved with NSBE, the National Society of Black Engineers. Um, African Student Association um, and anchored a Bible study that I started um, when I was a sophomore. And so that is me. We can't wait to hear more. Faith, tell us about yourself. Hey everybody, my name is Faith. Um, I also just graduated in the spring. Um, I majored in medicine, science, and the humanities. Um, and I also did quite a few things. One of my favorites being I worked at the Life Design Lab from freshman through senior year. Um, what else did I do? I had to like write it down. I was on the, the track team as a high jumper um, and then Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a member of that, as well as Anchored Bible Study that always started um, in McCoy. It's like four people talking about Jesus. It's fun. Um, as well as like Black Student Association, African Student Association, um, and writing for her campus were the main things that I did. And currently I am in Chicago as a first year doctorate student um, studying occupational therapy at Rush University Medical Center. I'm like fantastic cheer mom. I'm so here for all y'all. All right, Pavan, you last but certainly not least. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Pavan Patel. I re recently graduated um, from Hopkins as part of the class of 2020. 
majoring in public health and natural sciences area. Um, and when I was at Hopkins, I was involved in student government, the Osler Medical Symposium, and research on the med campus and the School of Public Health. Um, I also participated in several internships at the Baltimore City Health Department, uh, the Senate Special Committee on Aging, and right now I'm a master's student at the School of Public Health in the Department of Environmental Health and Engineering. Also, you're totally not bragging, but you were senior class president amongst you know many other things, so you're a pretty big deal. All right, so we're going to go ahead and kick this panel off. I'm going to ask just a few questions to get started. And if you're in the audience, go ahead and start throwing some things in the chat. We'll make sure we get to them. Um, we're excited to hear what these three have to say. So I think my first question is just kind of a basic one, but one that I know is such a different answer, you know, for different people and based on your lived experiences and kind of what you hold dear and what you value. So we'll start, you know, in reverse order. So Papa, if you could start here, you know, how have you come to define leadership? What does being a leader mean or look like to you? Yeah, so uh, to me, I think leadership is about taking your responsibility seriously. Um, for you guys, as the shift from high school to college, a large part of that transition is just um, taking charge of your personal and professional growth. So your time at Hopkins, it's really a time for you to use those experiences and figure out what kind of person you want to be and how you're going to use the talents uh, that you that you get together during your time at Hopkins to improve the world. For like an example is if you say come in saying you want to be an engineer and the coursework that you take, you absolutely hate it. Uh, being able to recognize that and adapt is important, I think. And I think that if you're able to find what you're passionate in, you'll be able to succeed a lot better than if you do what you came in thinking about um, for longer periods of time. So I think in terms of leadership at this stage of your career, I think that's that's what I would say is the most important, being able to, to take charge of what you are uh, putting yourself into and then being able to adapt when you realize you don't like something um, and just shift. Yeah, being able to pivot is just so important, like paying attention to how something's making you feel is such a critical kind of gut reaction to really listen to. Faith, what do you think? What is leadership to you? I think in this Zoom age, it looks like for me, one very specific thing, which is being a person who is brave enough um, and bold enough to reach out. Um, regardless of like your personality. I'm a very loud, outspoken person. But I mean, even just being able to via text, email, whatever it is, just reach out to other people because um, I know as being a first year student now um, and transitioning from high school to college, like the first thing that you're kind of worried about, especially if you don't know anyone, is making community, making connections, things like that. And that can seem kind of impossible right now. But going that extra step to like, whether it be in a Zoom chat or sending an email to a club, even if they haven't reached out to you, that type of thing, kind of finding your people um, is gonna have to happen in a way that's not as organic as it may have happened if you were just on a quad or something like that right now. But um, the people I have really appreciated in the transition to this program are the people who are willing to make the group me or like reach out and just say, hey, how are you doing? Or even like as silly as like, I like your like elephant in the background, like that's cute just to be reaching out and to be, um, making those connections in this time where it can feel very, very lonely looking at Zoom squares all day long. So many Zoom squares. Awe, what about you? Yeah, um, I'd say that <clears throat> in like the broadest sense, I think leadership to me just means caring, uh, caring enough to be involved um, and about like whatever organization you're a part of, um, whether it's like school related or um, like more research or anything just anything you're involved with like it's like you care enough uh about like your own experience and others experience that you want to help create that uh and help it better it for other folks um and i think i wrote here like stepping up even if you're not sure uh and like sometimes you may doubt yourself and think that like oh i don't know if i'm qualified if i'm capable of doing this or that um but i think leadership is really all about like figuring it out and trying your best uh, and growing, as Pablo was saying, like growing within yourself, you know, uh, and stepping into the role. Um, 
And so, yeah, especially at Hopkins, um, I think that when we're at Hopkins, really like when you hear like eboard member, often it's just someone who just cares, you know, they want to be a part of this, you know, does it, it's not super hierarchical. It's just like, oh, I care enough to want to be a part of this. And so I think that's it. And you have to, and as Faith was saying, you have to take that first step and like take the initiative sometimes. All right, first years, I'm, I'm putting you on notice. You're about to be asked to open your questions. So feel free to put them in the chat. I'm going to ask one more and then we're going to open it up a bit. So I'd love to hear from y'all a little bit about how, you know, what your journey was like in terms of, you know, you showed up at Hopkins and you had to figure out, like Faith said, Faith said like, where is your community? Who, you know, and how do you do it? Obviously in this virtual space, I mean, y'all, are kind of figuring that out too in your respective programs now, but just what did that look like for you as a first year? Where did you look? How did you decide what community was a good fit for you? How did you find leadership opportunities? Um, you know, because I think a lot of first years are really wondering, you know, how do, how do I do this? How do I really make the most of it? So I'll let you unmute yourself and decide who wants to go first. I can go just because mine is easy because it's what I just said for my first answer. Um, but like I said, I'm not a very, um, not a super shy person. So I knew um, kind of going into school that I wanted to make friends. I didn't know anybody in the area, um, didn't know anybody else that was going to Hopkins, um, even from my state, let alone my school. Um, so it was kind of intimidating coming and knowing that a lot of people were from Jersey or from New York or from Maryland and kind of had those connections or did like a Prio or something like that. Um, so I really just kind of came by myself with a randomized roommate, all of the complete blank slate. Um, so I kind of found things that looked appealing to me and then pursued it from there. So even if I was like, I, I felt very cringe being like the newbie and being a freshman. So I was like, I just assume that everybody would laugh at freshmen, which it's not like high school. College is much more mature than that in a lot of ways. Um, and so I was like, if they're already going to think that I'm like weird for talking to them or for being a freshman in the first place, I'll just send the email anyways. It doesn't matter. So I kind of just went through kind of some of those lists and some of those um, first events that introduce you to organizations um, into different groups and then went through and before some of them even emailed me or if I didn't get on their email list or whatever it was, I kind of reached out to them and was like, hey, can I hear more about that? And just that one super like literally copied and pasted to a couple of different clubs that I was interested in got the attention of some of the upperclassmen who then became some of my mentors and hooked me in with some of the um, other members of the community that I wouldn't have known otherwise. So just taking that first step to reach out myself and decide what I wanted to be a part of. Um, and making myself a part of that, feeling it out. If I didn't like it, there were plenty of things that I was like, yeah, I'm good after like the first meeting or two um, and kind of picking and choosing what was the best fit for me. That's so great to hear, Faith. <laughs> um, for me, I think it's a combination of two things. Uh, I think it's both like my own interests and so like me, stepping forward and like, oh, like this sounds cool. And then also like communities that were willing to accept me uh, and, or not, I guess more like where I just felt comfortable. Uh, and again, it's really like the people that made it. And I think like who made my experience really cool and like helped me grow in my positions or like as like over my four years. So like really like if it was something like, like an outdoors club, I'm not really a super outdoorsy person, but like if like I had vibed really well with the outdoorsy folks, then I would have spent more time in that club. And so really it was just like spaces where I felt like I belonged, you know, and like, or like I felt that my voice was heard. Um, and for me, like that, it just so happened, like those were in spaces that like vibed with like my own sort of like mantra, you know, like I did engineering and like Nesby was a good space at the National Society of Black Engineers. Um, I was part of the community impact internships program and like that's like working with so is faith uh, and like that was a program that pairs students with like nonprofits and like I knew that I wanted to work with nonprofit organizations or like um, sort of be involved with the Baltimore community and when I entered that space uh, that space accepted me and like I just felt comfortable in that space 
Um, and so it sort of goes both ways, uh, but I also like stayed very open to uh, different clubs. So when we had the student involvement fair, I know it might look a little bit different now. Um, I wasn't just going there looking for like the one or two that I had circled rather. I, I just sort of like explored all of them and like had the like had people talk to me, you know, like the groups are like, say, come check us out, come check out like squirrel watching or something silly or not, no, you're not silly to them, but like, um, but squirrel watching, you know, I'd like just go hear what they have to say. And like, if it does sound interesting that like you're being, you're being open to it, if that means maybe going to one meeting or like whether it's like virtual or not, like going to one thing and like seeing how people are and often like the best works, I think, are ha have people who will follow up with you, you know, and they'll check in with you and see like, oh, like, what do you think? Like, what are your thoughts? Like, would you like to come to this? And sort of, so sort of like goes both ways, uh, but you have to be open and receptive. Um, and I would say, uh, so I, like as a first year student, some of you might know exactly what you want and others might still be figuring that out. So this is a great time to try out a bunch of different things and find your passion and pick up friends and mentors along the way. So to give some concrete examples about like what that might look like, I would say research, internship, and student orgs are what come to mind. So research is a great way to learn and get hands-on experience while working under uh, the mentorship of faculty and being able to count faculty as mentors um, for advice while you're at Hopkins and then after you've graduated. Uh, for me, that's been really valuable, especially now where I've graduated from my undergrad um, and soon I'll finish this master's program and I'm thinking about my next steps. The same, you can say the same about internships, which can be a great sort of segue for jobs that you might be thinking about. Um, and then student orgs. Student orgs are uh, a good way to engage with your peers. So uh, research gets you a great mentor and then student orgs can get you great friends um, because you're engaging with them in a non-academic setting. And uh, a couple options I think that are good um, that come to mind are the Women's Pre-Health Leadership Society, um, APO, which is a service fraternity, AKSI business fraternity, um, the newsletter, I know they do good work. Um, Hoptoberfest, Spring Fair, uh, maybe even Greek life. That's a great way to meet a bunch of different people um, since you know social interaction is something that you guys are gonna be wanting a lot more of. Um, and then it's also, I would say important to remember that balance is important. So you have to balance these commitments with your academics and your personal life. And that's important for your mental health. And in general, it's just good practice to know when you're stretching yourself too thin and as a result, you might not enjoy anything that you're a part of, even if you have 10 different things. Um, so I think balance is something that you should keep in mind, especially now when you're when you have so many different like commitments in this virtual environment. I'm sure you get a ton of emails from from all different places. Uh, so you just have to prioritize and, and decide what works for you. Um, I think maybe to start off like in terms of clubs, you can try a bunch of different things, but a good balance might be like one club that's just purely for fun and then one that's more academic career oriented so that it's not like all work or just all fun. You know, if you can find a way to mix those things, um, that's good. And then, like I said earlier about adapting, if, if you're getting bored, you can add more things. If you're, if you're feeling like you don't have enough time to do what you need to do, it's not, no one's going to be mad at you if you drop a club or anything like that. It, people do it all the time. So uh, just keep your options open. Yeah, such good advice from y'all. So first years, you're up. So go ahead and if you feel comfortable unmuting yourself, feel free to unmute yourself and pose a question to a group or you can go ahead and throw it in the chat. We love to hear kind of what you're thinking about and how they might be able to give you advice on how to navigate it. And it doesn't have to be about leadership. If you have like a burning question, I'm okay with you broadening the horizons of this panel. Hi, um, I had a question. Sorry if you can hear noise in the back, that's my mom yelling. But um, I had a question about like how you guys were able to balance leadership roles with like academics and like how many leadership roles you did and I don't know, like, I'm sure at some point it must have gotten stressful, but like how you dealt with that, you know? 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. It's a very good question and it's very relatable. Um, and it is a challenge. And I think part of the skill and like part of like what we're trying to do in undergrad is like learning how to grow in ourselves and like in balancing everything. Um, so like, don't expect yourself to be like perfect at it from the beginning. Uh, some people can handle like 10 things and like get great, great, good for them. You know, like if you're, if you can do like one thing and like do well at school and like, that's like what you find fulfilling, like, and like you're able to balance, like then what I'm trying to say here is like, you find what's right for you. Um, and for me personally, um, I was involved with quite a bit uh, and I sort of tend to like fill my cup a little too, too much. Uh, and it would like the downsides come in different ways, you know, whether that means like you have less time to do your homework or like uh, study for an exam or you'll drop like a responsibility for a club and then you're potentially letting like your club mates down. And so like all that matters. And for me, like, I know I had one bad semester where like, it was just a lot, you know, um, but I think that was necessary for me because I need, I need to learn how to say no uh, and understand what my limits were. Uh, and in the end, like it really helped me enjoy and make the most of like the commitments that I were, I was a part of because I was able to give my best to them. Uh, and ultimately like school is important. And so like making sure you're finding your balance, like while being able to like, not just like do your homework and study for your exams, but like go to office hours and like, <clears throat> excuse me, go to office hours and like get to know your professors too, because like they're just as important uh, in your network building and uh, your own development. Other thoughts, Faith, Tavan, about how to handle the stress when it gets too much or how to know what's right for you? Um, I second everything that always said, just to start off, I was laughing really hard when you asked that question, just because I was looking at always, who is like a person that everybody knows as somebody who does everything with a smile. I also did a lot of stuff, not always with a smile, um, <laughs> like always did. But um, I would say, find the things that um I don't I might go kind of against what he just said a little bit but like I would say try everything until you reach your limit this is what I did and then reached my limit I was like dial it back from there but I'm just the type of person my work style is like if I have structured things throughout the day so if I know I have an e-board meeting on this day and this day or this time and this time then my work is going to have to get done and this however long two hour block or something like that so that pressure ends up being good stress for me I know that's not how everybody works um, but if you give me all day to do like a problem set I'm going to take all day to do the problem set if you give me two hours answers will be written on the page in two hours whether they're correct or not that's a different thing but um yeah I would say I I'm trying to look at like what I did. I, I was in a sport that took up a lot of time. I had like two campus jobs and probably like five clubs and two or three e-boards, which I would say is like on the side of doing entirely too much to the point where it was kind of just like out of spite of not wanting to quit anything that I finished through, which I don't think is a healthy approach to take. But I also think you're capable of doing more than you, you think you are. Um, and so don't limit yourself because you think something's going to be too difficult like allow yourself to be challenged school is already going to be challenging I know y'all know that from being two months into Hopkins it's ridiculous academically but um sometimes allowing some of those clubs and stuff that you weren't planning on putting into your schedule will actually help you build a better schedule and a better work ethic that you didn't know you had because you're like let me just get through this problem set or write this paragraph of this paper super quick because at the end of it I get to hang out with my friends at BSU or like I get to go plan a super cool event for um, as the freshman rep of African Student Association or whatever it may be. So um, that might be unorthodox and people might disagree, but I would say reach a limit and then dial it back from there because I don't want anyone to sell themselves short or not pursue interests. That might be like the one club that you're like, I don't know if I have time for that this semester might be the one where you find your people. So do as much as possible and know when your limit is hit and be very bold and verbal about 
this is my limit, I can't do any more. Um, so learning to say no early um, is also very good. It's kind of about, I just said like very contradictory things, but find your balance. It's gonna look messy, but it's worth it because you'll find your people. Yeah, I think Faith and Awe gave great advice. Um, I think I would I would just say like during your first semester, you shouldn't also need to feel the need to just like dive in while while you're remote because it's not like if you don't get involved during your first semester, you'll never be able to get into these things. You can you can always add them uh, like next semester. This is your first semester at Hopkins, so feel free to gauge how things are going for you. You know, if you're taking on a certain major and you really need to put in the work in that. Uh, that's that's perfectly uh, reasonable, and then you can just you can figure out if you are uh, needing to do more or needing to do less, and make those adjustments. I would say um, I really appreciate all of your different viewpoints. Like Faith, you're not wrong; it worked for you, right? Like there's no one perfect way to do things. Everyone had kind of a different approach, and that's exactly what we're not going to give you a checkbox. See, this is what you should do it's figure out kind of what works for you, which is hard. Um, so unfortunately, in some ways it's good that there's no checkbox and in other ways it's difficult. Um, but I think that figuring out what works for you, I don't think just joining things in the end, I mean, for, at the beginning, I think it's totally fine to join things. You don't, at, in the end, I would suggest not just joining a bunch of organizations just to put them on your resume. Um, on the flip side, you also don't need to be president of every organization either. So finding kind of that balance of being able to say what you gained from it and what you contributed to it, but also not needing to say I was president of 65 organizations, but I've also seen resumes with 20 organizations listed and they couldn't say one thing or one person that was involved in that organization. So kind of a balance of both. Yeah, that balance is just so important. Just thinking about what works for me. That's the takeaway I feel like I'm hearing from everyone here is like, honor yourself and honor kind of what you're feeling and let that kind of move you forward. So first years, any other questions that are popping up? Feel free to unmute or you can put it in the chat. I know Andrea has a question. So maybe Andrea, if you wanna go and then we can see if anything pops in the chat. Yeah, sure. So um, at, you kind of all had your own strategies, right? To figuring out what groups and what type of groups Pavan had at your a great kind of approach that works for you, kind of the different types of categories of groups. Um, what would you say, if anything, was the benefit of joining um, seemingly unrelated organizations or seemingly unrelated to your career path organizations? Did you find any benefit? I know students at Hopkins are so strategic in wanting to make sure you get good grades and you get a job afterwards, um, which of course is why you're here and what's important. Um, but I think sometimes having things unrelated is potentially also beneficial. Did you find benefit to joining um, kind of unacademic related, um, unmajor related things and kind of what was your strategy? What, what, um, what was the benefit to you then or even now that you noticed that it's looking back, it's, it was beneficial to do that? So I think the one experience that comes to my mind is uh, when I was a Mosul major um, at the end of freshman year, uh, during that summer, I took a, a, like a research position at the Johns Hopkins Drug Access and Affordability Initiative. And I got to do some really cool projects and things that where I was working on this and it didn't even feel like work at that point. Whereas like the basic science research, um, that, that feels like work. You're putting in a lot of hours and like you're doing um, these procedures. So finding something where it didn't even feel like work, I think by doing this public health research in drug pricing, um, that was something where I wasn't expecting to, to really uh, love it like that. I was expecting to learn about like what public health is all about. I heard a lot about like a lot of people being public health majors and I was like, 
why are so many people in into public health? Let me find out what this is about for one summer. I'll do this position and just learn what what's go what this place is about. Um, and I ended up really enjoying that. So I think that and then that led into an internship in the Senate um, in the Committee on Aging um, under Senator Collins. Um, so I think that you never find, know where opportunities come. And I think that if you try things out like that, you might even end up finding that you enjoy something that you didn't even know what it was. Yeah, um, I'd say for me, luckily campus has a lot of uh, cultural groups um, and those are usually, I mean, you don't, it's not like an engineering cultural group. No, it's just like cultural group. It's just like go learn about like your culture, whether, you know, like they have literally for any like culture, wherever you're from. Uh, for me, um, I was part of the African Students Association. Uh, and with that, like I got to be in a fashion show and be in a play. And like, that was really awesome. And like, it just one, like for, for so many reasons. One, it was like a break from my academics. Like sometimes it felt like, oh man, like I have a problem set to do and like submit this, but like, and I'm like, I'm here doing like fashion show practice, but like, that was actually like the, one of like the best things I think that could have happened to me. Um, when you get to connect with so many other students who you have some sort of shared background with, even if you don't and you're just like exploring like that culture, um, you can still connect with students who like at least have the same affinity for like this culture with you. Um, and you get to like participate in really cool stuff. Like I know some of like the East Asian groups on campus, like um, they do really cool like events with like, uh, I forget the names of them, but like, I get to go to them and like celebrate like whatever's happening. Uh, like it's like Chinese New Year or like I know for Southeast for uh, South Asian students they have a um, Diwali and like they put like a whole uh, celebration on in the rec center and it's just like it's a really good way to like connect with other students and see what's important to them and like take a break from school and I think for me personally like it's that was important not just for like my undergrad career but like moving forward uh because it's no it's shown me that I need to seek spaces that aren't strictly in like my own like profession uh because like really like that's what life is and so like wherever I go I'm always going to be seeking like other African students like not students Africans you know and like find ways to connect with them and like so it's not life isn't just like work and go home but it's like so much more full or fuller yeah I was going to talk about ASA and always took it, um, but I can talk about, um, I just knew you were going to talk about CIIP, but I'll talk about CIIP instead. I think Hope put some information in the chat. Um, even if you just bookmark it, text it to yourself or whatever, keep that on the back burner. Um, I joined a community impact internship program. I joined it um, the summer between my junior and senior year, literally just as a way to like make money over the summer, which not why you're supposed to join it, you're supposed to join it because you want to make an impact on the community, which I wanted to do meaningful work and also make money um, to be able to pay my rent over the summer. Um, and so they, you kind of fill out an interest checklist of like what areas of service and things like that and community engagement are you interested in? Um, and mine low key didn't matter because I was the only person in the cohort, one of the only like two people in the cohort that had a car. And there were a couple specific placements that just needed a person that had a car <laughs> that required you to drive to and from places. Um, and the, the internship title was data analyst intern. Um, it's, not, it's not what I am. A data analyst is something I learned about myself. I'm in occupational therapy right now, which is like healthcare. Um, not the data side, the like, how are we feeling today? Like, let's, you know, whatever, like changing people's diapers and stuff like that is, is what I do. And so they put me into this role of like, here's Excel, do you know how to use that? You always put, you know how to use Excel on your resume. Um, and so they ask you to do it, but I, we figured it out. It was great. Um, but so I get tossed into this room, I'm the intern and I have five teenage interns underneath me who are like, Miss Faith, what do we do? And I'm like, Miss Faith, what do we do? I don't know. Um, but that internship and that position was like one of my favorite memories at Hopkins just because it engaged me in the community around Hopkins in a way that's like 
I would have never gotten anywhere else. I also found out that like data analysis on that level isn't actually that bad. It's very interesting. Um, and I just kind of learned about something that um, my motivations to get in it was one thing. And I got that thing that I was looking for, which was like money for rent over the summer. But I also learned so much more in those, the kids, I shouldn't say that young adults, still contact me for to this day of like for professional help and stuff like that because I used like my life design resources to like take them through resume workshops and all that stuff they use me as a reference all the time I'm like I don't know what my title is but whatever y'all need me to do like um got one of them hired at Burger King literally like last month they were like thank you so much um but it was just something that was like completely out of my wheelhouse completely off my right like if you would have asked me about that an analyst me Loki don't ask me today either because I don't really have a definition but it was just something that like I would have never even looked in the direction of that and it was something that I was kind of thrown into based on very random circumstances like I have a car I've had experience working with kids um like I own an iPhone to like map where to go and it was ended up being like interviewing grassroots leaders across the city um which from the outside looking in is not at all what I thought I was getting myself into. So just sometimes like staying optimistic through things where you're like, this is not my fit. Um, Cause sometimes that can be like where you learn the most, but yes. I love that. I needed that laugh. Thank you. That was a good Monday laugh. Ugh, okay. So again, first years, feel free to throw things in the chat. I've got some more questions coming the panelists way. I think, I just love the transferable kind of piece of, you know, this immersive life at Hopkins. Like all of y'all were just so involved in so many things. And I'm interested to hear, you know, what skills or, you know, even like life lessons or values do you feel like you took from your leadership and your involvement at Hopkins? And how have you had to exercise those already in the few months you've had post-graduation? Um, one thing I learned throughout like my different uh, adventures in being on incident groups uh, was about organizing people. Uh, and through that, I learned a lot about people and organizing. And uh, what one, one thing was that like people want to have friends and people want to be in community with one another. Uh, and so since getting here uh, for grad school, like I've been able to uh, form groups, you know, like I, I made that group me, like Faith said, it's like the people who make the group me uh, for classes, like I make it uh, and organize like, oh, let's go grab boba or like, let's have a photo shoot, you know, let's do these things. And like learning that like people, it helps form community because like people want to do it sometimes, you know, people want that community and sometimes they just need someone to like, prompt or like start it up, you know, uh, and I like doing that. And I not I wouldn't have gained that confidence had it not been from like the numerous times I had to like sometimes force people to like come to events in undergrad. Uh, but now like now I, I know how to get that know how to get people to come to things, but rather like I know how to like bring people together. And it's also like also knowing how to like frame experiences. Like you 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 really learned that and like you can turn like that you could turn anything into anything else. Like, and you, it's not lying. It's, um, what's the word? <laughs> like, I don't know, you could just turn things. Finesse for, it. You could finesse, like you, you really do learn how to finesse. And uh, that's an important skill. Um, and yes, also like, I was just in like an election for like a student group here uh, at Stanford and like every single person uh, brought up experiences they had in undergrad. And like they said, oh, like I once uh, put on this event or like I once like had to raise this money uh, and coming right from undergrad, like those club experiences really are like your chance to show like what you can do, in, you know, like when you're, whether it's at a grad school or like at a job or like wherever you are, like, like your club experience is your experience when they talk about like, oh, you need some experience. You're like, yeah, like I have some, I've, I led this club or like I was involved in this club where I got to do these really cool things. And oftentimes, or like often like, at least for these first few years, uh, I guess your early twenties, like that's, that's, that's all relevant. And like all that stuff's on my resume.
Hi, um, I had another question. Um, uh, oh. oh yeah, if any of you guys like were ever in this situation, I was just wondering like how you dealt with it. Um, having to be like being in a leadership position, but having to deal with someone who's maybe like difficult or like uh, maybe a friend that just so happens to be under you or something, getting them to work or do what they need to do, you know? It's challenging. I was about to be like, um, that's a very, 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 very good question. Yes. Um, I guess one example I can give is um, being, I was this past year, the president of my chapter of um, my sorority, Delta Sigma Theta. And so basically the people, it's very small. It was very small last semester, like less than 10 people. Um, and all of us are very close. So like those are my friends before anything. Um, and having to be the boss of your friends can be extremely, extremely difficult. Like being in clubs where you get to hang out with your friends um, is cool until like there's kind of that discord of like, okay, but actually like show up and actually like do your part. Um, and so always starting off kind of like setting boundaries is the number one. If you're already past that point of like boundaries have been set or like whatever it is, the foundation was set, people just simply aren't listening or aren't doing their part, then that's kind of when you come in and you kind of do that reframing piece of like what's going on. And that can start as something intimate. Like if you feel close enough with that person to be like, let me meet with you one-on-one -on -one, cause I don't want to call you out in front of a group if it's something personal or something that we don't see on the surface level. Um, but then if it just, if it goes beyond that, you also have um, not throwing you, you know, to the wolves, but like you also have people like Hope who are like people who are literally professionals to help you through these situations. So like there's been plenty of times in workshops and stuff like that where I've worked with Hope through actually with my sorority like problems of like how do I get people to do stuff? Like I feel like I'm doing everything, I'm drowning and like people won't even like my message in the in the iMessage chat. Like you literally just got to put the heart like that took two seconds. And so working with professionals, those resources are in place. I'm like I sound like a walking promo board, but like my go-to was the life design lab just because that's where I was most comfortable being a worker there. But um, leaning on um, people like Hope who are there for you and for your student organizations to kind of be like, okay, I need an outside perspective. Like, am I being too hard on this person? Or is it really like, what is the objective problem going on here? And what's the best plan of action was kind of um, something that I had to put, um, kind of the stuff I had to go through when it came to like, the uncomfortableness of like disagreeing with someone that is your friend, but also having a professional relationship with that person. I think it's it's great that you asked this question because times like that are when you learn the most. I think for me, I learned by like trial and error, basically, uh, you know, you just find what works for you. Everyone deals with other people in different ways. Some are, uh, some are more um, like, you know, yeah, I mean, everyone has a different personality and so everyone works with other people in different ways. So you have to find what works for you. And if it doesn't, you have to fix that. And if it does, then that's great, but it might not work for the next person. So uh, you, have to, you have to make sure that you identify people as like individuals and understand the situation like Faith said, and then, and then take it from there. I'll add a little bit to that. Um... I, I, I call it having courageous conversations. Um, and this is something that you'll have not just in undergrad, but like be like past undergrad and in, not just with like peers, but with like people older than you or younger than you, like you'll have it everywhere you go. And like, it's a challenge, um, but it's something like you also have to, you have to sort of like go through uh, and learn from. Uh, and again, like not expecting you'll be perfect at it, but you doing your best. And if your best means like, like, oh, let's go to the life design lab where like, I mean, hope is there. Like Adrian and Michael are there, like ready to help with this. Then like you do that um, or you turn to like your club advisor if need be. Uh, and you say like, oh, what do I do here? Uh, one example for me is like one quarter, like one semester I had, um, 
a student who I was informed they were not doing well academically. Uh, and as president, I had to tell them that they couldn't continue being on the, well, they had to like, there was like a probationary period for them the following semester. And I was like, how am I supposed to do that? Like, <laughs> I'm their friend, like you're the club advisor. You should, you should be the one to tell them this. Like, <laughs> I can't do this. Um, so to make that conversation easier, um, I had my vice president come along with me uh, and like, it was like somewhat like sort of supporting and it's like, oh, like here's what, here's what the rules are. Here's what we're gonna do. We're here to support you and like walk through it together. So like for me, like my, the step that I took was have, having my vice president come in and like we did this together, uh, one to support me, but also to support the, the student. And so like make the best decision that you, that you can, but understand like, you might make a mistake and you might handle it wrong, but that's okay. We learn and we grow. Just try and be a good person. <laughs> Love that. We're coming up on 5.50, so we've only got a few minutes left. I could talk to you all forever. Um, first years, just want to check in again. If you have any more questions, we'd love to hear from you. I do have just a few more, so I'll ask one more and then we'll see if any come through the chat. Um, I'm interested just to hear from you all what general advice you have for our first years. It can be an insider tip about Hopkins, a place you love. Um, I just think it's been so hard, you know, for so many first years to not really get to be on campus and like feel what that's like. And so I think any tips you have, you know, just to share with them are very welcomed and appreciated. My general tip I would have um, is just, and it sounds so hard right now because we're all remote, but it would be to make as many connections as possible. And just remember um, in your interactions with people that like, especially in this time of like Zoom squares, like that might be the only interaction that you get with that person. So trying to leave your best impression as possible. So like tangible ways that you can do this if you're a person that likes checklists is like go to office hours even if you don't really have any questions, like talk to the professors. Um, that's just like, I can't tell you how many times that I was like, not even just for grading. Like there have been times where I was on the cusp for a grade and the teacher was literally just like sat me down and was like, I know you've come every other week, even though you had track practice and you told me all these other things, like, let me help you. Um, and also just like, got me a job. Like I got my job with the Life Design Lab because one of my professors worked at the Life Design Lab and she was like, we have an opening and you always answer my questions in class. Um, do you want a job? And I was like, yes, please. Um, but also like LinkedIn, all of those things, making connections, um, cause they'll last. So you don't know like what professors you have now that you might have in the future or what um, professionals that you are working with on a staff level, like Hope or Andrea or Michael, that you might see along down the road when you're doing it in a different position, not just as like a first year coming to an event to learn about how to get more involved, but now you're that leader of that club and you're looking for a resource or something like that. So um, never be afraid to like send an email, anything like that. Um, just reach out and kind of um, be bold with it, but also keep that professionalism. And yeah, I think uh, going off faith, I think networking is important. The ability to reach out to people when it feels like you don't have anything connecting you or in common. I think uh, that just being a part of the Hopkins community, people are willing to, to answer your questions, be able to give you advice, um, willing to give you advice um, and even put you in touch with their connections if you need something. So I think that being able to reach out when you need something is a really important skill that um, is important for you to develop during your time here. And I think it can only help you. Um, you shouldn't feel like you don't have any uh, anyone helping you. Um, so if you're able to reach out to these people um, that you wanna get in touch with, just do it. It can't help. Um, and I think that'll help you. Yeah. Um, I second and third, um, the all the tangible stuff that Faith and Pavan just shared. Um, but also like less tangibly, I guess, uh, is like try and have fun. 
with everything that you're doing um, and be open-minded to the opportunities that come your way um, and sort of like, I don't know, like or organize your life in a way. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm a big, I guess it's sort of life design, but I, I like drawing like my life out and like the things that I'm involved in and like understanding how much of a commitment things are. And like, I, don't know, I think that helps me personally, like make the most of the spaces that I'm in, whether it's academic or like extracurricular. Um, and also understanding like who's in my life uh, and knowing, like I always, I, I took advice from older students knowing that like, oh, I should get to know upperclassmen. And so then I see like, which upperclassmen do I know? And like, I'm like, oh, I only know one person. Like I should probably make a bigger effort to try and get to know one or two more. Or like, I know I want to be a mentor to folks. So like I put myself in a position where I got to be a mentor to younger students. And so like sort of just being intentional about what you want to do with your life and like what the spaces that you want to be involved with uh, and actually like taking a step, like don't be afraid. Uh, no one's going to judge you or anything. Like that's something I know I was afraid of coming in as, as a first year student, uh, like what will people think of me? But like the truth is uh, everyone's just trying their best. And so no one's going to, think any less of you or going to be like, oh, you're trying or like, no, just do, just do your best. And like, trust me, like that's more than enough. All right, y'all, we have time for one more question. Anyone in the audience have any last question that you'd like to share with the group? Um, hi, it's me again. Uh, if no one else has a question I had another question but it's not necessarily related to leadership it should there's like a program I really want to do over the summer but like um you know for freshmen and sophomores so I wanted to at least apply to it this year I'm trying to talk fast because there's only five minutes left but um so I was I I need a rec letter from a teacher in the field of my major my major is behavioral biology but like right now the only two classes I'm taking that are even close to that are intro chem and gen bio but I've never like spoken to either of my professors. And so I know I could like go to office hours, but like, what do I say in office hours? Like, I, I don't wanna just sit there and be a face, you know, but I, I don't know how to start conversation oh. so that I can build a relationship with them. And eventually, cause I, I also don't wanna go to office hours one day and then they see right through the, they see right through me and they're like, oh, you're gonna ask me for a rec letter in a couple months, aren't you? So, yeah. Okay, thank you for asking that question. Um, I'm dealing with something similarly right now, um, but, and I'll hear, I'll tell you what I needed to hear myself. Um, but one, like, okay, just go to the office hours for like the chemistry or bio, or like if there are other students there, you can like schedule a separate one. Um, you said you haven't had any bi behavioral bio, like specific classes yet, um, but the, department still has like, like people like they saw professors and you can reach out to them and just like, you can go on the website and find professors in classes you might take in future semesters and just say, hi, I'm a first year student studying this. Could we like just chat over 20 minutes? Uh, and during those, like you shouldn't be super intimidated. Like they, I mean, once you set that up, they also wanna be there and they wanna hear about you and like your, like why you're interested or like, even if you're not sure why you're interested, like you just go and chat. So you just talk about yourself um, and that's one way to like, definitely like just build the relationship and start building the relationship. Um, and in doing that, one thing that they'll definitely see is like your potential, you know, from your interest in, from your interest in like just chatting with them, they'll see like your potential to do well or like for whatever reason. And so, uh, you can even ask them, you'd be like, oh, I hope it's not strange, but like, I want to do this program. And like, if you could write me a letter of recommendation based on what you've seen, like, that I would be really appreciative. And like, I'm looking forward to future behavior bio classes. And like, if they say no, well, then at least you try it and they said no, but like, you wouldn't know until you try. And so that's what I've got to say to that. Yeah, I think as, especially as a first uh, semester, like freshman, you shouldn't worry about um, professors thinking that you're just talking to them for a rec letter. Um, if you're taking a class with them, you can just reach out to them, uh, like I always said, talk to them a little bit, and then you can let them know that you're trying to apply to this program and that you need a letter of recommendation for it. Um, it's not it's not like 
the professor expects you to have like this lifelong uh, commitment with him for for in return for that letter of recommendation uh, during your time at Hopkins like you'll you'll have so many other classes by the time you're a senior even that you might not be going to that same professor for a letter of recommendation by the end of it as you did in the beginning so um, I think I think you should follow what I always said in terms of just like reaching out letting them know who you are what you're trying to get out of whatever you're doing and then you can you can send them an email requesting a letter of recommendation and if if they might say like I don't really know you that well like or whatever then you can take that as a sign that maybe you should ask someone else and people will be willing to write you one so you don't have to like be stuck on one person and say that um this person has to write me a letter of recommendation uh so yeah wouldn't worry about it you, you'll get it so you don't have to like worry that no one will write you one I love this. All right, last thing, we've got like 60 seconds. Quick and short, your favorite place on campus, Otway, go. The Center for Social Concern. Great, Faith, go. The Life Design Lab. <laughs> I didn't pay her to say that. Come on, what about you? I think I, sp I spent a good amount of time in sea level, so I kind of miss uh, sea level right now. Okay. I love it. Oh, you three. I think the world of you. Thank you so much for being here tonight and for sharing your expertise. If you're in the audience and you want to connect, please just feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to connect you with Faith Awe or Pavan. I'm happy to help in any way. Michael, Andrea, and I, we're all, we're all here. So we're just going to keep throwing emails in the chat. Feel free to grab them. We're proud of you. Enjoy fall break. Please take some time to rest. I know y'all are just grinding it out in your first year. So please take some time to rest. We appreciate you. Bye y'all. You're the best. Oh my God, this was so great.